Here we go. Everybody, I didn't. I didn't. Where am I? Just letting everybody in. Let me. Right, I've got to just have my camera on for a little bit. Can you mute, please, if you're just coming in. Really? Oh, I'm not mute. Right, we'll just give it a couple more minutes. There's more people entering. Wow. This is great. I feel like we should have music. Yeah. I always do at the start. We should have like background music <laughs> in a cafe. This, what a lovely collection of faces. Oh, with so many familiar faces as well. It's lovely. Great. Bear with us for a moment, folks. Great. I think I'm going to start if that's if that's OK with everybody. There may be a few uh, joiners um, coming on their way just to let you know that this meeting is being recorded um, so that we can share it with others afterwards. If you're not happy to be on screen and not happy to be recorded, do feel free to switch off your camera. That's absolutely fine. So I'm Juliet Morton. I'm the founding director of Dialect and Dialect yeah, Press. Um, and welcome to the... Now. Inaugural launch of collaborative work in Dialect more. Press, and this oh, is our yes. new venture in publishing. There's somebody um, with a very loud mic. Can you just make sure that you're on mute, please? Thank you. So we're absolutely delighted to be celebrating the work of four brilliant writers and artists this evening. Nick Grelia and Emily Lucas, also known as Both Laughing, and Rachel Goodman and Elvia Roberts. We feel genuinely honoured that they've entrusted us with their work. We're really thrilled to be launching this out on the world today. So we realise that for many of you tonight, um, this will be your first encounter with dialect. So I'm just going to give you a tiny bit of background um, on our organisation. So we're based in Gloucestershire, but we serve writers all over the country and sometimes overseas. We get writers coming to us from Germany, from Canada, from Australia and elsewhere. And since 2020, so for about three and a half years now, we've been um, offering or trying to offer the same sort of development opportunities to emerging rural and edgeland writers as our urban counterparts just take for granted. So we try to nurture talent, we try to connect isolated writers and communities and offer writers opportunities to share their work. Um, to join regular workshops, we offer mentoring and we've got a new membership scheme and now we've got our publishing arm. And it's honestly a really, really wonderful thing to be growing our community at a time when the world does seem to be pulling itself apart. So tonight we're launching these two brilliant new books on Imilk. It's exactly halfway between the winter solstice and the spring equinox, when we're beginning to see the return of the light. So today is a kind of in-between liminal day when the winter is loosening its grip on us and we're emerging from the dormant or dream time. So this is a time for awakening and for the things that have been held safely in the earth to begin to reach up beyond the soil horizon. It's also a day on which the goddess or saint Bridget is celebrated a figure of liminality, born on the threshold Sorry, of a door, which is neither inside or outside so the house, at the breaking of dawn, which is neither night nor day. 
fittingly, she was patron goddess or patron saint of, of right. poetry. And in the Irish tradition, she's associated with those whose voices radio. have historically been silenced. She's also associated with rebirth and renewal, which seems an apt theme for this evening of writing that challenges the old ways of representation and brings in new framings of female experience that are playful, imaginative, and frankly, quite often, just downright extremely funny. So it's my very, very great pleasure to welcome you all to this celebration of language and the power of words to unmake and remake ourselves. And so, without further ado, as they say, I'll hand over to my co-director, Emma, to introduce tonight's authors, who I know are very, very excited to share their work with you. Over to you, Emma. Thank you, Julia. I'm going to echo everything you said about welcoming everybody and what an honour it is to introduce these two pieces of work uh, tonight. And before I get into the business of introducing each of those uh, collaborations and their authors, I'll just give you a very quick overview of how this event is going to go, just quickly, so you've got a sense of the, um, the arc of the evening. So uh, first of all, we're going to have uh, readings uh, from Elvia and Rachel. They'll be doing some readings uh, from uh, Knee to Knee um, after I introduce them and each individual author as well. Um, after that, I will be introducing properly Both Laughing, the collaboration between uh, Nick and Emily, Nick Grelier and Emily, Emily Lucas and their work in John Mintz. And we are gonna have a live interview between them so we're not going to interview them they are going to interview each other and hopefully that will open up discussion on the process of creating their work and then after that we are going to have a Q&A session so if anybody there's quite a lot of us here today we've got people come from all over the world so I'm very excited about that so we're, the way we're going to do the Q&A session is if you have questions as you're listening as you're thinking and reflecting please do pop them into the chat and we will see all of those questions. And Juliet has got the hard job of picking out questions to ask during that Q&A session to hopefully prompt a really interesting discussion. Um, so do, if you've got thoughts, so it doesn't have to be a question, put your comments in there as well, because we'll have a record of all of those lovely comments from you. So I have a Q&A session then, and then a slightly shorter second half without me reintroducing everybody. We'll have a game of enjoyments. Uh, Nick and Emily are gonna lead us in a first for me, I think possibly a first for everyone, an interactive game of enjoyments. Um, and they're gonna talk us through the process of how that's gonna work. And then we will have some more delicious readings from Knee to Knee, from Elvia and from Rachel. So, and we'll have a second Q&A at the end as well. So if you feel like you've missed out in the first half, there's a second opportunity to have discussion, to ask your questions, to learn about their process at the end of the event. And then finally, we'll have some closing remarks from Juliet. So that's the shape of this evening. It should take us about an hour and 20, something like that in total. So not too long, not too short, hopefully. And it's my difficult job to make sure that I don't get too wrapped up in the discussion and I keep a sort of time. So without further ado, I will introduce the first um, of our two authors this evening, uh, Elvia Roberts and Rachel Goodman, and their amazing piece of work, Knee to Knee, which has just launched today. In this groundbreaking collaboration, Elvira Roberts and Rachel Goodman question the ways in which women have been written over a lifetime, asking, are they fit for purpose? They rip up the rule book, ditching versions of self that have pinned them to the page. And what emerges is a witty, raw, sometimes heart-wrenching invitation to inhabit this world in a new language. And to quote the poet John McCullough, knee to knee is a thrillingly bold and passionate venture. Energetic phrase making and beautifully shaped silences embody resistance to patriarchal constraints and other attempts to diminish human potential. A consistently exciting and thought provoking collection, fantastically perceptive and alive with imagination. And the poet Heidi Williamson says, in knee to knee, two poets combine to expand the boundaries of she. She is plural, playful, sensual, and anarchic. She asserts fresh punctuation to reconnect, to halt, to disrupt rigid attitudes. This verbed, her poems interrogate the limits of the female as defined by others. 
compelling reading. Before I hand over to them, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about each of the authors, although they collaborate, I just wanted to focus on them individually. Elvira Roberts is a poet from the LGBTQ plus community based in Nottingham in the UK. She works as an interpreter between British Sign Language and English and with a background in other languages. Elvira writes from a physiological reimagining of emotion, often through the animal, vegetable and mineral. Her poems have appeared in publications including 14 Magazine, Dark Mountain, Finnish Creatures, Magma, Reliquiae, The Rialto, Tentacular, and the Candlestick Press anthology, 10 Poems About Getting Older. Moving on to Rachel, Rachel Goodman, formerly an actor and BBC presenter. Rachel moved back to her native Norfolk coast 28 years ago to raise a family and to write. In 2017, she graduated with distinction from the MA in Creative Writing and Poetry at UEA, where she also received the Brian Heiser Memorial Scholarship. Her poems have been published in Magma, Aesthetica, Under the Radar, Finished Creatures, The Alchemy Spoon, Ink, Sweat and Tears, Lighthouse Journal, Fenland Poetry Journal, Tears in the Fence. She was shortlisted for the Bridport Prize 2017 and 2021. She's currently writing about grief, the astonishment of loss, I love that phrase, uh, coastal erosion, and where we place body and memory when the ground has gone from beneath our feet. But I will hand over to them to introduce themselves and read their work. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. It's such a delight to be here. It's been quite a journey. We started four years ago, almost exactly four years ago, when Rachel swung me an email. We didn't know each other very well. We'd met a couple of times um, and said, Magma Magazine are asking for collaborations. Shall we collaborate? So we started with some photographs and childhood yes. photographs. We didn't want to be influenced by words and started writing emailing each other. Rachel lives in Norfolk, I live in Nottingham. We thought we'd probably meet up quite regularly. And then there was a pandemic. Um, so we carried on throughout the pandemic. Um, we both had caring responsibilities, um, but there was something that really held us to this process. And the more we got into it, um, the more we discovered how we wanted to work, how we wanted to completely co-write and not to do a kind of call and response collaboration. And once we'd finished that first poem, we knew what our subject was, which, um, which has already been described and where we wanted to go with it. So we both have very different lived experiences from very different backgrounds, but this was what came from it. And this was a kind of commonality that arose in a in a different kind of voice from either of our writings. So we're going to start. Yes. And the first poem we're going to uh, read you is Knee to Knee. And it's the poem uh, that Elle's just been talking about and the one that birthed the whole project. So here we go. Knee to Knee. Well, knee to Knee. Why not the one of her as a child, as a me, as a me, as a me, as a, from the first click, as a me, from the first blink, me, as a smile, sweet as a rip roaring me, as shiny blue, as a, from the first frame, me, as a, you are all there, in jaunt, in comfortable knees apart, body bowl you as a world opens to make room with fat breath, offers a hollow place which you roll, fierce shine into, smile. Why not the one of her starting to write herself, where she shines simply too trippity bright? Do not think, do not think, think not of not speaking, think only of where skin on skin is utter ease where i fill my own frame with a smile and a kingfisher on my hand you kneel to draw in sand yield 
to make room for her as a girl, as a her, as a her, as a white dress flickering with no thought of worth, as a her starting to stretch, change shape, pulling her hem over her knee. Why not the one of her as me, Holly? Culpepper's plant of Mars, being of a gallant cleansing and opening quality, the decoction of the root made with wine openeth obstructions, provoketh urine, helpeth to expel gravel and the stone, the strangury and women's courses. Has she begun to flow? Why not the one of her learning her stretch? She is on her knees pleating her flesh to hide her flesh, tucking herself inside her bruise. I curate a quieter me as a thin, uncertain me, as a, as a, mutilate and deform my own language, lang, languga, lang, you are fine steel under a high load, elastic, up to the point of yield. We are two knees. As grain in rock. We write, we write. And write we did. And uh, we started by looking at what had been written about us, how he had, how we had been stated, and we dug out our old school reports, which are a very good source of found uh, material. And uh, in the book, we use these uh, comments, these these writings about us, um, as juxtapositions, as jumping off points, as counterpoints, as resistance points. Um, so this next poem is called School Report. School report. She looks happy enough. Seems to have settled in. It's become a bit of a habit. Pinning rosy circles to each cheek. A face fastened with a flinch. The point comes through if I try to smile. Bristles against my tongue. Makes eating difficult. She is always pleasant and helpful. However, rather quiet. I can see you can't see me. I don't know who lies behind. And might benefit from a little loosening of this tight control she has of herself. Scratch and pull. Pull out a hair, one or two, scratch and carve. Blink, weep, blink, blink. She is too talkative. If only she were less argumentative and thus more cooperative. Masked with a beaked mouth, choking through time, the back and underskin, returning me eyeless. A Greek warrior, a bald rabbit, a talking oak. Can't see me, a flash of iron claw. Her tendency to being obstinate still persists. Otherwise, a good term. And so, from our found text and from all the contradictions within our school reports, we realised that the more we wrote, the more we questioned the received wisdom and hence questioned even grammar, subject matter, how the syntax, work, work, syntax worked, and started playing on the page with symbols and spaces to see what we might not need anymore. What can we discard? Let me decide where my edges start, whether or not I want a name or even species definition. ID. A white thing in a field. A dead sheep. A dropped tissue. A f 
furrow puddle reflecting cloud. Let me be bored with A. Patch of daisies. Plastic bag. School blouse. White thing in field. White field. And taking account of the impact of all those external messages upon ourselves and of the anger, that claw that rises within us mm -hmm. and thinking about how we as women tend to press that anger down and inwards and squash it into so often into depression. We had to write a poem about some of the darker places that that takes us to. So Rachel is going to read a poem that is simply called, Oh. Oh, to not have to do, to not stand up, to not this weight gathering in my skull with an addict's gleam is my tell. This need to sleep, perchance not to dream, to think, to feel, to weep, to wake, to rage, to plane against the grain, graft choice, harrow worth, but be a pool of nothing between trees. Soak into the soil, sink, solve. Day is coming close and the size of it, the girding up of it makes me envy babies off calendar with an easy engine a body wants. Day is coming close and the force of it the hard grasp of it crushes the sides of my face, dragging down my eyelids, stealing my jaw. In the swell of I don't want to think, truth louvers to fog, sucks me into the hollow of zero, better than fluoxetine, olanzapine, citalopram, diazepam, zopiclone, risperidone. Lull, lull me, oh, baptize me out of my life. Hand me yellow flowers as my head rolls onto the floor. And we didn't want to leave either ourselves or you in this first half with a duvet day. I think I might leave Rachel in the duvet day. So I'm going to read a poem called The Land Remembers, which is our antidote to all those feelings and is one of our retellings of the stories that we are told and have been told over centuries. The Land Remembers. It is the old story of the world with woman at the root. She squats in the belly of time, neither ruler nor prophet, breathing beyond her skin. There is a prescription of hair, eyes, build. Huh, look in the mirror, there is the description. She upturns the jar, plants her own food, feeds her companion, speaks her mind. So the old story lays it at her feet. She's trigger, turning, chose the wrong colour, asked the blue question. You can be lustful with coriander or unwanting with curcumin. It is planted again, again. Shake the soil, heave the taproot. Here is cassava. You can be martyred with cinnabar or loyal with saffron. It is painted again, again on your tongue. Suck your teeth, flex the snake. Here is lime. When stripped down to we, the I, 
in a poverty of labels. We richness of being I, this I to this I, turn the world on its head. Begin a recipe of sky. Thank you. So we'll be back uh, in a minute or a bit later, um, but now over to both laughing. Oh, I muted, I muted myself. I'm going to just introduce both laughing for you before they get started. Thank you so much uh, to me, to me, to Elvira and to Rachel. It's one thing to know how good something is. Obviously, we've been, I've been pressing it into people's hands and saying, look at this. It feels genuinely special and unique to hear it read aloud. Um, I've had some snippets, I've had some audio snippets, but to hear, to sit and listen and let that wash over me this evening, um, I feel like I'm sort of seeing something absolutely brand new. There's been some amazing comments coming through. I hope you guys have seen the chat as well. Um, Elvira and Rachel, you can have a look at that now. Um, everybody's so appreciative. Thank you so much for putting your comments into the chat. Um, it's a strange thing to do this online, isn't it? We never did this really before the pandemic. So, um, in lieu of that atmosphere of all being in a room together thank you so much for putting your thoughts and comments in there please keep keep going keep doing so just a reminder before I move on to both laughing as well for anybody who's come in a little bit later just to remember to keep yourself muted uh, while we have readings um, and uh, we're going to have a Q&A session after we've <laughs> had um, an interview between both laughing between Nick and Emily I will introduce them now their work in Jarmonts can be created at home as both laughing has proved. The process is a fulfilling one. Oh, I beg your pardon. Let me just start that again with a proper introduction. In Jarmonts play with language, color, font, and layout, understanding words as visual propositions. The Jarmonts are both one word poems and small works of art which explore the serious business of finding new words to describe real life conundrums around artwork that is domestic. Sarah Bodman, Associate Professor for Artist Books, Books at UE has the following to say about it. Have you ever been told that good art isn't something that can be made on the kitchen table? Well, it's a lie and this book proves it. As artists, we use whatever tools are readily available to us. Enjoyments can be created at home, as both laughing have proved. The process is a fulfilling and often hilarious, thought-provoking way of thinking about what artists do and how everything overlaps between art and life every day. To quote Madeline Bunting, the award-winning writer and journalist, these enjoyments draw you into a disconcerting, playful game in which words disintegrate or reform into unfamiliar amalgamations. Nothing not even a word is what it seems. Look and look again as the letters dance, fall out of alignment and jump out in unexpected color. Simple as a child playing with their first letters, but complex, a rebellious challenge to the constraints of language. So that's enjambments. And I'm gonna give you just a bit more information about uh, the people behind the enjambments, both laughing. Stroud-based artist duo Emily Lucas and Nick Grelia's Both Laughing collaborative work is grounded in drawing practice and rich research that explores, discovers, invents, solves problems and cracks jokes. They make artwork using low value, low-fi materials and objects from around the home, including baby wipes, stencils, felt tip pens and printing stamps in order to tackle the problem of emotion versus seriousness and other hierarchies, both in the art world and wider society. Their remit is to regenerate new ways to talk, write, and think about drawing and other art practices. The work is both playful and serious, celebrating difficulties and achievements. Together, they have begun to develop their own manifesto for drawing as a way to embrace mistakes, test out new ideas, and acknowledge non-binary viewpoints and gray areas, giving value to the overlooked. And I should add also that both Nick and Emily have recently been shortlisted for the sixth John Ruskin Prize. So they are fresh from London uh, and joining us here this evening. I will hand over to you now. Thank you. 
that was beautiful. The readings were yeah. um, stupendous. Very good. Okay, well, this is something different. Um, uh, we're just going to interview each other because we kind of like to ask the questions and um, see what happens. So I'm going to kick off. Um, Emily, how did both laughing come about? Well, um, we didn't we didn't know each other a few years ago, but I was doing some research into drawing as a feminist practice and came across Nick and she became a case study for my PhD. And uh, we did a series of interviews, um, about six, I think, until we um, started to just keep saying, oh, we should really make some work together. We should really make some work together. And um, and that's what we decided to do. Um, and the both laughing name came about because I had to transcribe all the interviews we were doing. And so often it came up that we were laughing and I had to write in the transcripts, both laughing in brackets. Um, so that's why we're called both laughing. So how did we start to make work together? I just wanted to interject that yeah. quite often our interviews were often in the studio, but mm. also at home. And quite a lot of the laughing happened because um, everything is funny, but also our washing machine or something would be going in the background going. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we do find things very funny anyway. How do we start making work? We think that um, it was in January. Well, we started talking um, a year earlier, but um, we went and did a residency in um, at the garage in Bristol, um, which is a really lovely residency where you just um, propose and um, the, um, the person who runs it um, likes to, she wants a conversation. So, and we just uh, went along with loads of stuff from our house and um, just rubbish really and household stuff and lots of low value materials, drawing stuff. And um, we just, we didn't really know what was going to happen. And we just went along and started playing. Play is actually really important in our whole process. Um, and um, so how did enjambments come about? Well, um, well um, one of the problems that we went along with to the residency was that um, there were, we knew we wanted to find better words for things like domestic, um, which had massive connotations of cleaning and autobiography, which is um, uh, quite low in the pecking order um, in the in the literary world or, or even in the art world where we're making, we both make work about um, not necessarily ourselves, but things that are pertinent to us. And of course, being um, artist mothers working at home, very often having to have our drawing practice alongside our work practice, um, we often made work about what we were thinking and feeling and we wanted uh, good terms to come up with that. Um, we'd made a massive drawing when we started the residency um, that had um, all the research on it and all the ideas, everything we'd been talking about, questions, um, artists, philosophers. Um, and so we took words off the big drawing and came up with the idea of word mashing, um, putting, thinking of German words like um, Schadenfreude. Um, and initially we were just going to put two words together, sometimes uh, opposing words that, that meant two different things, but when they were put together, meant something completely different. And uh, then we thought, actually, no, three words is better. And, and what about enjambment? How did we come up with that word? Um, it was part of the, um, we were reading somebody who was writing about autobiography and he came up with the, the uh, enjambments of power. And then we realized it was also a term, a po poetic term about bulking things in somehow. And it just seemed very right to use yeah. for the words. And we didn't really know what it meant, and that was good. No, but we that's fine. It. Yes, <laughs> we thought it sounded right. Yeah. So how do we play in Um Well, we, we play, you can play in jammants however you fancy it, really. Um, but what we did was we made hundreds. So we took all the words off this big drawing, and we made, we started out just writing them on bits of cut-up um, cereal boxes. And then we, we, we wanted to show you, actually, but we can't right now. Um, we we made hundreds of um, individual playing card size printed words, and um, and then you just um, take you pick three. You can either do it like Helmanism, like when we were kids, um, and just they're all laid out, and you randomly take three, or you just pick three, get dealt three, um, and you just put them together. However, it seems right. We're going to have a game of this later. We invite you to have a game too. Um, and we just come up with a meaning and it's just, it can be really funny. Sometimes it's a bit boring. Yeah. 
it, it just gives you um, a wealth of possible meanings. Um, anyway, what happened? What happened was, so we made these playable cards, which are each card, you'll see them later, a little um, individual artworks within themselves. And we invited people to play in different settings. So we started out playing around the kitchen table with friends um, and just laughing about different um, definitions that we could come up with. Um, and we um, had people play it in um, an exhibition we had in Nick's house, which was um, great. So that was another sort of different sort of people who were coming in and playing. And we also um, played it in academic symposiums, um, which again was a very different way of engaging different sorts of people. And it, it's it's been really great to have part of the room is that um, we're not making definitions ourselves that that are it's a, it's finished sort of propositions exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, everyone can have a go, yeah. and um, everyone's and as equally important and and then putting it together um which you can see on the screen now um we we decided to put um to print well we ended up with 33 um of these um printed cards and um you can see that we've played with um blocks of color and chunks of words and things so they they become something different um, yeah, so I'm going to ask what has it done for us? Um, well, it's provided us with titles for all of our work. We make work um, across drawing, as as you've mentioned, um, but also film. We've done film performance, um, textile, text work. We've done what else have we done? Audio. Sound. Yeah, yeah we've done all sorts of. Yeah, <laughs> anyway. So we needed, we needed, so the problem solution drawing, which you can see on the screen now, is the title of the big. Um, manifesto diagram that we've that we're still working on and all our work goes on to that diagram um and so the the this game has actually provided us with a way of um titling our work and um having a sort of a really good progression of titles for you know we can and and actually it's a really good game for playing for other reasons if you need to find words for you know in, in, i don't know there might be other solutions that you yeah. need to find but um champions domesticity yeah as a serious proposition for creativity yeah basically and um also we do really love to have fun and mm -hmm. it's been really good fun it has been yeah kind of that's all folks <laughs> <laughs> ah you're nearly at the end <laughs> thank you so much uh nick and it's just Lovely to hear, you. although we've had discussions about it, it's so wonderful to hear you interview each other and that process of kind of generating discussion in that way. Um, Humour and an examination of the domestic is uh, certainly something that Juliet and, Juliet and I share a really profound interest in. It's just such a joy to, to give this the platform that it deserves. Um, and there's so many amazing comments coming in as well. I just saw... Yeah. We had somebody ask if they're available as prints. So I'm going to start with that question quickly. Why not? Well, yeah. there is available as a book, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, we we can look at that definitely. We do. Um, we have a series of posters which we which are available as prints as well. So that is something that we do. Um, so yes, we can have that conversation. But obviously, um, the book is the thing that we're talking about. Here, so. <laughs> yes, quite right. Sorry, that's my job to say that. I should, should have uh, led with that one. Um, but. We're going to go into our Q&A &E, Q &E session now. And Juliet has been scanning the comments and the questions. I have questions, but I'm going to try and wait and let everyone else have a turn. Uh, so I'm going to hand over to Juliet. Um, if you've got something that you want us to ask, uh, bang it into the chat now. We're a little bit too large of a group for us to go around and ask people to uh, say their own questions. Um, Juliet, how's it looking over in the comments? Yeah, no, we haven't got any questions as yet. I think um, we're just waiting to see if they come in. So feel free to kind of kick off and we'll come back okay. to the chat shortly. While Hi. we're waiting, um, could I just say something about, um, which we meant to say in our introduction and we didn't, um, an important um, point of our process um, really was actually the sort of foundation was because of lockdown and because of not being able to meet we decided to start a lockdown journal which was an online journal which we 
um, we, we made a couple of rules at the beginning, which was we didn't have to do it every day. We could just respond to the other person. We had as a Google document. We just wrote backwards and forwards to each other. Um, and it had uh, quotations, confessions, angers, um all sorts of things in it jokes whatever whatever was and and that i think one of the interesting things about the pandemic is it it it's sort of the process of being locked down it's happening um, in they gave us a sort of um a sort of uh, almost a freedom or, or um a, a shortcut to intimacy maybe and um so this lockdown journal in the end went for, for days and days and days and days and days months and um we ended up with this huge bank of source material which we then went back to and that became the uh source material for um nearly all the poems actually was, was often where the seed was planted and one in something that one or other of right. said um so the lockdown journal was 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 a, a very important part of our process yeah and and i don't know if if other people here found this but essentially having a pandemic where so many people's lives were threatened where our and and many people were dying and where everything was changed that suddenly the um the first layer of polite communication or the way of hiding some of what we felt kind of went out the window because it was a raw time a more raw time for everybody um so i think that probably enabled us to become more intimate more quickly than we would have done in another time great thank you i've got a question here from the chat so this is for everybody actually so um how do you deal with disagreements how do you know when something is done is it obvious or does it take a bit of figuring out and that's from pascal thanks pascal who are you asking <laughs> Well, do you want to go? How do you deal with disagreements? <laughs> How do you know when it's done? Oh, we're just slightly different for enjambments. I don't, I don't think we've I ever think had we, one. No, we just. Oh. No, we haven't. If we think of doing something, we always just do it. We just say yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's obvious because, to both of us when it's finished. Yeah. Because also, we never, yeah. at the outset, never, ever no. have a kind of um, outcome goal. No. So. For us, it's really play or oh, okay. Have we had enough of playing? Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Emily used to be a, um, a, a primary school teacher and it really reminds her of yeah, kind of going does. into a classroom and just, you know, playing with material. But anyway, in terms of, no, we've, we've, we've never yet yeah. had a disagreement. No, we haven't. <laughs> and we have, our different, we have our different skills, I suppose, as well as yeah. being really, we just work together really well. Yeah, we do. Yeah. And, and, then we, and then we divvy out what we're better at, each of us. Mm. So, you know. Emily's really good at and, um, writing and research. It, it's and I'm quite good at tech. yeah. It's quite good to have. We don't really have our egos uh, in, the, in, the, in the in the mix. So, mm -hmm. thank you. Oh, one other thing, really quickly, before you ask the others, um, is that um, we've we've really discovered that working together, make the work that we make together is really, although it's not a million miles away from what we do separately, it is really different from what we do as individual artists. Mm -hmm. But it's also given us, as individual artists, absolutely loads of underpinning of what we do and research yeah. and confidence yeah. and yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I think the I think the word disagreement is quite interesting um, because we we um, never had disagreements either. But it depends what you term a disagreement. We made we made some sort of not not exactly rules, but. Um, I don't know, intentions at the beginning yeah, that um, we would be honest and we would be trusting. And if um, in our in our sort of as we were uh, editing or put, creating a poem, um, we said, you know, if, if one or the other had the freedom to cut anything and and equally uh, we had the freedom to, if you wanted to keep something in, you had to advocate for it strongly. So, uh, and this was the process we did, which was quite, it's quite rigorous and it's um, quite uh, challenging. Mm -hmm. And so perhaps some people would turn that a disagreement, but I mean, um, we, I think, I think uh, uh, like uh, Nick and Emily have said, I think, I think trust is really important actually. And just, and the ego, I think once that's laid aside, mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if that's a 
female thing um but certainly um we were really conscious at the beginning you just let go of ownership and that seems to me to deal with the whole problem of disagreement because if 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 you let go of sole authorship or ownership of a line or a word or an idea and it's it's actually there in in the sort of arena in front of you what you're talking about then you don't have an axe to grind you're just looking at the thing you're not looking at your thing there's, there's also you the do... value you get oh, yeah, from yeah, someone yeah. saying to you that's a bit close to a cliche or you've used that phrase before or oh this is very soft and sweet and where are we going with this and and you know when someone says that to you and you have that slight stone sinking feeling of damn it she's right <laughs> um so there's that and, and also that as the more we worked together and the more it became apparent that this was an other voice that this was that this um we were both working towards the, the, the for the sake of the poem, which I guess is but like repeating. It's not about ego, but it was it was really quite easy. And then we had a very rigorous editing process, and whole poems have gone um, <laughs> because because they don't fit, or because they're just not quite right, or they're one person has influenced them too much. They've gone. Yeah. Um. Can I just briefly ask, um, just is it related to another question in the chat, but um, somebody, um, sorry, both laughing, Nick and Emily were talking about that they, you know, they have different roles. Do you have different roles as well? Do you bring different kind of skill sets to the collaboration or I, I wonder if it's different for you as writers rather than artists? Um, trying to think what we, what's different. Um, we might bring different folk of emotions I always think of Rachel as being tending towards the lighter more joyous side and I'm much more dark and angry um, <laughs> so that's that's a nice balance um, uh, we both do the editing there was a question earlier about process um, essentially one of us will start with a line or a word and a uh, it's about, I think it's about this, it's in this ballpark. And then the other person will take it and play with it and send it back and we'll play with it and play with it until at the end, neither of us knows who's written it. Mm. I couldn't say, oh, that's my line or that's Rachel's line. It, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's, it's like it's been cooked. <laughs> That's such a good way of putting it. Like you've created something. There's a there's a process, a chemical process that's been undergone um, through the process of working symbiotically like that. Absolutely fascinating. And I I, I love collaboration. It's grist to my mill. Julia and I are big collaborators. It's really interesting to hear this. I've seen the questions come coming flying in. So I'm gonna I'm gonna roll back. We do have time for at least two more questions. I would say. Um, can we grab the one from Heidi Williamson, which is about um, how can you all talk a little bit about how working with somebody else impacted on the development of your own work and voice? Yeah, well, um, somebody and somebody, another poet, actually, Elizabeth Lewis Williams, who I, I collaborated on um, with another poem, um, pointed out that one of the fantastic things about collaboration is you have you have half the doubt and twice the encouragement um which which is great because when you're working on your own I think anyone who's involved in in writing or any creative project there's you go through a lot of oh god it's not good enough uh, I can't say what I want to say all this sort of stuff and the fantastic thing is working in collaboration is that you've got somebody else to go you know you're rarely in the same place at the same time so when you're thinking oh this is all just shit the other person can go no 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 <laughs> it's fine or um but also you you've got um the other person going yeah yeah you know believe in it it's good and and we found that that was a fantastic you know and we almost I certainly did I don't know I, I had a sort of post collaboration trauma you know I can't, say, oh, I can't do it on my own you know I'm gonna, I'm gonna sink into this sort of slough despond but um it, I, a collaboration is brilliant I would urge everyone to to try it and that, mm -hmm. I think in terms of how it influenced my own work um, so I was already finishing a pamphlet. So last year I had a pamphlet called North by North North Out. And it's it's very different from this. Um, and but but I think with Rachel, I've been more playful. 
Um, and there's something about working with somebody else that enables the play. Um, but also in working with Rachel, I think I really honed some of my editing skills. And so that benefited my own pamphlet because I was able to look at it with a slightly more, um, not necessarily a critical eye, but um, I was able to let go of some stuff. And I think letting go has been yeah. a big part of collaboration. Mm. Really interesting that themes come through again and again, a sort of releasing things, letting go of things, uh, removing your hold on particular parts of your ego or your assumptions about how things have to work. I'm going to pass that question on to Nick and Emily. If you've got I, I, personally, I think that because we've leapt into um, things that we wouldn't normally do, such as mm. we made a film with a filmmaker here, um, which was a, um, a Martha Rosler kind of homage to... Um, semiotics of the kitchen and you know we we didn't have the technical know-how to do it but we brought somebody else in so we did an, another um collaboration with her but um but also we've we've but i never we've, never would have made a film no no on no, my no, own. no just no, never i don't know i, I do these done. sort of little drawings that end up being yeah put together and quite big but they're quite yeah. intimate and small and um tentative i would say and making work with Nick I've been yeah it's just so different being able and, to and in my work I feel like it's just I, yeah. I just there's there are I don't know it's 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 let I've let go of rules mm -hmm. yeah um you know I think some rules are really good but part, not too many part of the remit of what we've done is to make this manifesto for sort of subjective autobiographical drawing and it's enabled me to kind of have a lot more confidence in the drawing that I'm making yeah. on my own poor Emily She's she's in the th final throes of her PhD. <laughs> so, um, you know, this is the work that we've been doing is so much it's, part it's, of that. Yeah. So she's going through that, that. Yeah, the work's been fun. Writing about it is less fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's not yeah, always no, the way. <laughs> definitely affected both of us um, to get, you know, to work together mm. like this and how we work individually. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. And Julia, I think we've got time for one more before we roll into our slightly shorter second half. Let's have that question from lovely Alice. Hi, Alice Willits. Um, what did you find the most surprising and delightful in the making of Knee to Knee? But that might also go for both laughing fringe and Mints as well. So what did you find most surprising and delightful for yourselves? Are you asking Knee to Knee? Knee to Knee. <laughs> Um, I I think Rachel's already touched on how um, how positive it is, how much you support each other, how much and and honestly, I hadn't realised how much I could easier it is to believe in a project where another person is involved um, than it is to believe in your own individual project. This and it just I had no doubts. I had absolute faith that this was good stuff. Even, you know, even we sent it off to magazines and it didn't get taken. I still thought this is good stuff. Um, so there's something that, uh, again, it's that stepping back. It enabled me to go, yes, this is good because it's not just about me. And maybe that says as much about my own um, self-deprecation or lack of self-esteem that when it's just about me, it's harder but about somebody else, it becomes a more generous, more um, I kind of want to do this kind of expansive <laughs> act with more possibilities. And, and I, I want to kind of capture that and take some of it for me, but it's shared. I think, yeah, for me, the, the biggest sort of surprise and delight was how um, it, in, it just enlarges your field. Um, you know, and I look at what we've written and I know I couldn't have done that myself and um, and it's not necessarily I couldn't have done it without Elb I couldn't have done it without us without the collaboration and that so the process of the sort of toing and froing which is I think you know it's quite laborious you know backwards and forwards and back and, you, know, you put a lot sort of into it possibly more than if you're sitting on your own um but it, but it also showed me what was possible um, and and I felt that pulled my work on, you know, when I look back at what I've been writing since we did the collaboration and what I was writing before then, um, it uh, it really has uh, just sh 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 opens up possibilities. That's that's what it's done. That's was the big surprise for me. Yeah. 
my, Thank my, you. my surprise is um, just the, I mean, we don't, you know, we're, we're artists, so we don't necessarily make books. Um, so making books is a, still a kind of revelation and a, can you hear us? Yeah. Good. <laughs> Suddenly went quiet. Um, but but just the the um, the tininess of putting together three words, you know, just picking pick, you know, inventing some process and picking some words and putting them together and then printing them into these these you know lovely little pieces of art. You know, I mean that's it's so tiny, but to make to make three words into artworks. And then to put them into a book and and have this sort of you know process of support and and people coming to hear us talk about it is yeah it's yeah kind of weird for us <laughs> yeah very weird <laughs> weird but lovely i hope um, yeah, that's a, lovely yeah really nice uh, it's a great way to join to, to bring to a close this section of the the evening and that particular q a session and I'm going to roll on and we're going to have a game of enjoyments followed by more uh, readings uh, from Abir and from Rachel and then another chance for people to ask questions. So I am going to hand straight over to uh, Nick and to Emily to ask them to help us understand and join in with the game of enjoyments. And this is going to require some participation from as many people as possible in the chat. Right, over to you guys. Yeah, so please feel free. We're going to pick cards at random, but I'll just show you the cards very quickly. So this is what they look like. We made a whole series of playing cards. One of the things we didn't really say is they're all a bit crappy. Yes. Um, <laughs> um, so, in a really good way. Yeah, some of the cards. They're, they've sort of bled out. And anyway, we love yeah. all that. And, and you know, when we've made mistakes, like on the cover of the, the book, um, we, we embrace the mistakes. Um, and anyway... They're nice to look at. Yeah. So we're just going to, I'm going to just deal some cards and see what happens, but please feel free to um, put your own definitions. Yeah, you could write your definitions yeah. in the chat. So that's one, so two, we're three. Just, it's just three cards. We're just random cards. So uh, critical, embodiment, repetitions. So we would just take those three words and we go, okay, does that work as a thing? And some, sometimes they don't work. Um, but um, I think actually the way I probably yeah. said it is cri critical embodiment repetitions is, um, I don't know, is it going for appeal? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, or, yeah, um, those things that you have to do every day. Things you have to do every day. But you have to do them. Yeah, there's and, no getting uh, away from it. No, and actually it's good to do them with a bit of joy, isn't it? Yeah. Whatever it is. Yeah. So, sorry, good <laughs> opener. <laughs> That so, one made me think of, um, you know, a friend of mine was sort of saying she's got the same things that she thinks about her body when she looks in the mirror. She's got those <laughs> phrases that are critical, so yeah. critiquing. Yeah. So yeah. That, that immediately made me think of like the repetition of those little yeah. critical comments. Or, not, yeah. good enough, not good enough. Yeah. Not good enough. Or yeah. To something. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Brilliant. but we, we try and keep it positive here. So, <laughs> right. What happens next? <laughs> so, one, two, three. Can okay. I just quickly add in, we've got some definitions here in the chat. We've got one, uh, Claire saying pelvic floor exercises. <laughs> yeah. Leslie Ann Evans has said pinching oneself to ensure presence. Ah, <laughs> yeah. great definition. That one. Nice one, yeah, and I yeah. love that. Okay, here goes next one. Reality, Ooh, where's that gone? Reality, uh, context. Oh my God, what's wrong with me? Can't do that. There we are, context. Uh, reversal. Ooh. So, ooh, yeah, here we go. Reality, context, reversal. Reversal, context, reality. I don't know. What is that? Anyone? Oh, well, maybe when you're expecting something and the exact opposite happens. For oh, good yeah. Or for bad. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Good, well, good, good. Could be bad. <laughs> Dennis has said surreal estate. Um, oh, we've got another one for critical embodiment repetitions, which is trying to get a word in at a male-dominated oh, meeting. <laughs> I was mansplained yesterday in the in the um, Pauline Boatier exhibition by a guy telling me about feminism and how it worked. I couldn't get away. That's, that's lucky for you. That's great. I, I was like, ah! <laughs> I, can't now. I can't speak to you. Um, right, discover. Eccentric. Oh God, what is wrong with me? I can't see there we are. Um, order. Ooh. Discover eccentric oh, okay. order. 
order or um order ex yeah mm -hmm. it probably is that way around isn't it discover or ex discover eccentric order mm. oh is that something to do with your drawers in your bedroom <laughs> And how you organise your... Oh, your yes, maybe. Small. Or don't organise them, or don't as the case may be. Yeah, but you know where but everything is. But I know is. everything is. Yeah. But yeah, or maybe my um studio HMI. table. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. Very brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Nice the question has commented HMRC. Yeah. yeah. We like that. Yeah. Like that. It's actually right now in January. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Living with a toddler from Ruth and Layla. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Ruth. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We'll keep going till you tell us. To well, stop. We, yeah, well, yeah. Okay, so just tell us when our time's up. There's so many definitions flying in now. I've got reality context reversal is actually what Needs and Needs poetry is about from Fran. Oh, okay. Nice. Uh, <gasps> and uh, when left is right and right is left on the camera, that's again for a reversal context reality. <laughs> Getting yeah. stuck in a revolving door from Mike as oh, well. Yeah. Like those mirrors that you look at when you stand, there's two mirrors opposite each other and you. You, it goes on forever and ever. Infinity. Would, yeah. Um, anyway, one another one? Yes, please. Unknown. Feeling. Success. Oh, that's a good one for today. Unknown feeling. Oh, that's making me Unknown think... success feeling, oh. I feel. Don't you? Or not? Unknown feeling success. Oh. <gasps> Is that when you just have massive imposter syndrome? I <laughs> Definitely. That's exactly what's come up in the, te in yeah. the chat as well. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. See that? Yeah. yeah. Everyone immediately knows that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No exactly. true. Yeah. Another one? I've, I've got my definition for that one, which is when you, you do brilliant parallel parking and there's no one to see it. <laughs> yeah. I always get watched when it's really bad. Somebody asked me about a week and a half ago if they could reverse my van for me. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm not saying anything about that, but certainly not was my unswervingly <laughs> retort. <laughs> um, That's a challenge. <laughs> honestly, honestly. Um, any, any? Do you want another okay, one? So we have last one. Last yes, one? please. How we doing time? Yeah. Okay. Got time. Get the drift. Maybe. Anyway. Okay. Swear. Delicate. Celebration. Ooh. Mm. Yes. Swear delicate celebration. Maybe um a delicate, delicate celebration swear. swear. A delicate celebration swear. Ooh, is that a kind of oh it's, it's when you're a little bit tentative, but yeah, maybe you want to uh... and also when I'm nervous, I swear. Mm. So yeah. um oh, yeah. look fuck. Oh sorry. Um <laughs> <laughs> but the um our battery's about to run out. What's going on here? I'll, um yeah. Sorry. That was the perfectly timed swear, uh, the oh. best time swear ever. Uh, we've Sorry, got, while you guys took that out, I'll read some up. We've got the feeling of euphoria when the cold water hits my bits and I get <laughs> fully, oh, it's gone. It's, it's rolled up when I get fully submerged in the <laughs> cold water, in a cold lake. <laughs> okay. Well, that must be, that must be, um, that must be you guys in the lake. Uh, <laughs> Marion has, uh, has said a christening. Uh, delicate celebration swear I think that's for that one and uh, yeah Mike's got messing up removal of birthday candles from a cake <laughs> <laughs> when you get your contact lens in first time from Letitia <laughs> nice. amazing um I'm just seeing it I'm, I'm sure I've missed absolutely loads so apologies if I have well I mean thank you to everyone for playing with us because you can see what fun it is. I haven't plugged it in, I don't know. Um, it's really, um, it's a good game. You can play it for other things too. You could just make up your own words and yeah. and then pick them and yeah. get some meanings. Yeah. <laughs> Thing. Thank you so much, guys, for, is it a world first, an online game of the enjoyments? Have we, is, is this the first time it's ever happened? Uh, oh yeah, first yeah, time online. Yeah. 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 Amazing, I love a first. <laughs> right. I'm going to segue as smoothly as I possibly can um, from that collaborative piece of fun into our next round of readings from Elvira and from Rachel. So I'm going to say as little as possible and just hand straight over to you. Thanks. Um, before we start, there's just two people we want to uh, thank from the bottom of our hearts. Um, 
for pulling this, helping us pull this thing off. Um, uh, the first one is Alice Willits, um, wonderful poet and facilitator and all round marvel. And right from the beginning, uh, when um, she encouraged us to write a poem uh, to submit to Magma, um, she has been behind this project. And many times we was, we sort of drooped and um, and she has been behind us the whole way, encouraging us and rooting for us. So thank you, Alice. And um, the other person to thank is um, Sarah Prail, who designed this fantastic cover and made me very happy because orange is my favorite cover. And we are thrilled um, with it. And every time I look at it, I get a little leap of joy. So thank you, Sarah, for your fantastic cover design. So some more poems for you. Take a breath and tuck in its tail. Roll forward with you inside. Let yourself go roly-poly, dizzy downhill. Remember when we were allowed to change tack, to sling our stick in the yellow pond and go off. On the other side, a tiny bird. Wren, with churring exclamation. Yes, wren's a feathered stone. A stone in river when light is right. Freckled. Body vibrates. Liquid tumbles silver coins. One day I shall own my hips. One day I shall speak my own tongue. Ratchet my wings. One day I shall roll. But, meanwhile, all the stuff from the school report stays with the adult woman. All the stories, all the words from society, from our parents, from other people, stay with us. And we wonder why we find things difficult sometimes. She still has her own brand of moodiness in her work, could easily have reached a much higher standard. She hasn't worn earrings for weeks. Kneels in her cave, tearing perforated paper, all those little commas with momentary tales. She still lacks confidence in her own abilities, could easily have reached a much higher standard. This next poem is called Aware, and uh, it looks at how much we carry um, a sort of straight jacket of expectations, which become our expectations. And this poem expresses our desire to just shrug those off. Aware is an extensive needs analysis and now casting array based around a network of demand radars. Images at fine resolution are received by her systems at 30 second intervals. Each file is analysed, compressed and stored. Update frequency, continual, end time, ongoing. Stop. Let me step off grid. Fall in slow motion towards the centre of the earth and keep on falling. Unscrew my jaw to let out banshees whirligigs and bee swarms. Find again the measure of my voice within the spiral yaw. Let me stay curled inside this thought that's just begun, stroking my nose, bunkered from radar reach and soundproofed. Let me love the red behind my lids. Stop. Let me bone sigh to my holding place, wait finding hollow, an orange in my palm as feather snugs into pinion, lean into the lightness rising from the ground, breathe in citrus smell of body living and living without my doing. The more we wrote, uh, the more we were amused and surprised at, at what um, started to come out. We began to drop uh, the self-censorship um, and we found that some of our work became really quite unseemly. 
Uh, so this next poem is one of the last that we wrote, and um, and we wrote it unusually for us. It was sort of quite a gallop. And uh, Elvia is going to read this because it's one of her favourites, and it's called Unflinching. Unflinching. I pick up the mess I've made and arrange it over my shoulders. Gorgeous. A splotched shawl without blood blooms. Pin my hair tall with a knitting needle or shave it off and tattoo a fontanelle. Gorgeous. Spike my ears with gold stars for learning to count and repeat after you, stretching each hole with weighty capitals and take myself, gorgeous, downtown. Lamenting lack of knives. I ghost smooth-skinned dolls, trail fairy lights and vitals, am sticky, feathered, scrawled in italics, haunting, throw me salt. I breach the golden ratio, leak pomegranate seeds, step outside brackets, emboldened, starving, feed me protein. I dream of knives, my darling sharps that split the bone. I, my knives, speak as the unflinching robin that tears the worm in two, craving, offer me sacrifice. My sweetest, tamest me, in her perpetual subscript. I strike her through, and as she dies, I lick her eyes shut. Revolting, swallow me, poison, that I may spew happy endings, skewer pronouns that agree with their antecedents, and still say, she. Red breast, gorgeous. So I quite enjoyed that. <laughs> um, and um, our last poem is our longest poem. And we both love it to bits because it is probably the poem that sums up our collaboration, our friendship, the work we've done, the way we write, uh, our process, and also friendship in general, friendship amongst women. Yes, it's it's a really, it's a sort of love poem. Yeah. Back to back. In the diagram of us, we are here, disc and nub, sponge and knuckle. Words resonate through shoulder blades, roll into ribs, breathe backwards to the heart. Ah. We listen through our skin, tuning through bone and muscle. Unapologetic, we feel the ridges of a scar, ask about the wound. We shiver where we do not touch. Mourn the incapacity of arms to soothe, hugging our knees, shell comforted. Shh. Back to back, there is no edge, but intersection. A brief burn, our long selves curl around our separate bowls, nodding above glass bellies. We run a finger around the rim, sing secrets that reverberate a distant yes. Back to back, bearing the scrape of stony contact, we navigate new coastlines, trace the arc and dip of self, fathom silted stories, unmap coordinates, throw soul authorship over the side and skip her by, how do we? Diving with our poet gills, we slow our breath, as memories press upon our lungs, trusting that we are enough to flow into perturbations of emptiness, filling our pockets with backwater. It's impossible to ask too much, be better than, tie up all the space, 
go too far. We are a cross knot of cormorant wings, lifting long black fingers, sea heavy, drip, drip, drip. We unpick our grammar, stretch without shame. So what if we are asking for pleasure, admit to violence? We come to us to be made honest, to relocate through the energy of leverage, enlist spines in a counter-language, a collaboration of bruises. Face to face, we would be bothered by mirrors and the noise of sympathy of trying so hard to understand and be everything. Back to back, we have not screamed a face, space, but breathed a rune between us, alive to spelling ourselves in flesh, blood, bone. How scared we were to ask our bodies to flex. We had been lightning conductors for shame. We urgently want to tell, increase the weight of weather, resist the narrative, disturb the data as it tails into our music, change the length of time, allow sadness, want it more beautiful. Listening in to death, we shawl the unexplained for warmth. Dream the beginning, back to back, compassion, companion. Thigh muscles begin to engage. We are here. We are here. There is lightness and lifting all the way up. Thank you so much. And I'm so sad that we can't have applause as you would in the room after that. I actually forgot where I was there at the end. I was like, oh, wait, I, I have to say something now. I got lost in those words. I feel really moved by your readings. Um, I just feel like there's something about the interplay of two voices as well. That's the imagery is really deepened. It's cinematic. I can, you know, I want to see the images at the same time. Um, and for both of you, I just wanted to say also how much power there is amongst the four of you, and it's handled so lightly and so deftly um, and with such humour. Um, everything I love. So thank you so much for your readings, your playing um, and your interviews. It was really, really wonderful. We are going to have another quick Q&A session. It'll be a little bit shorter than the last one as ever we're running over just a little bit um but i wanted to make space for more questions so many amazing comments have come through um juliet is there any question that we're going to leave with for this second q &A? well i don't think people have had time to get over that reading yet um <laughs> which was just astonishing just absolutely beautiful um so but we could just scroll back up i know there was a question about the punctuation marks on the page for elvira and rachel i think it'd be really nice if we could just get into that a little bit yeah i i was noticing i really wanted to pick that up um so within the book there's a kind of legend you know like maps have a legend i don't know if that shows um so there are essentially there's what looks like can i just have a look so, so. <laughs> Give it, yeah. Give it. Um, so there are there are three um, other elements apart from words, and one is that that kind of pause sign, the the two um, lines up and down, and that's about space and us making space, and it's like um, putting a, a crowbar in and crowbarring the word the world open and turning it and taking a different view. Um, there's the what we call the croquet hoop <laughs> and actually in maths that means an intersection of two sets and so we use that as intersection between people between us and the natural world um, even though we're part of the natural world so it's about intersections and then our, our other um, symbol if you like our other um thing other oh, well I was trying to think of it as an artifact almost but it's 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 space it's white space and how we're using it on the page for breath and expansion and pause and consideration and the opportunity to turn and look and let the eye criticize or observe or celebrate um those are those are the important roles of those marks 
Um, relatedly, uh, Nick and Emily, I wonder if you could talk about the grey space around the enjambments. Uh, the um, grey area. Yeah, well, um, we, you know, everything is a grey area for us. Yeah, <laughs> we just, we wanted, what did we want? I, think they, they, I mean, it, maybe it's more of a visual sort of, yeah. um, they, they need, because... We wanted to show that they were the objects. little objects, artworks, yeah. yeah. So they're not they're not um, printed on. I mean, they're as opposed to a, um, a text on a you know on a computer. I, I'm beyond being able yeah. to speak very well right now, but um, <laughs> uh, so they're 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 an object in there. So placing them onto a background gave them that sort of um, dimension. I, I guess see they were handmade, um, and also I love the grey area. We like grey area thing. Yeah. <laughs> We also really, really loved. Both of us were a bit wild yeah. and a bit yeah, just feel that like way. Yeah, we're a bit lightweight <laughs> compared to. It's so good, so loved it. Thank yeah. you. Mm. No lightweight in this room. Um, <laughs> I was, I was just reading back through the comments. I saw somebody said that uh, we were talking about that chemical interplay of like cooking things when you do something together, and somebody said it might be cooked, but it's still powerful and raw. And I thought. You get the best comments in rooms full of poets and writers. <laughs> Such a good phrase. Um, Julia, any final questions or comments before we wrap that up? No, I don't think so. I think it's time to wrap up, probably. Yeah, just so many wonderful comments from everybody. They will all be passed on to the uh, authors as well, so they'll get a chance to read through them when they're not thinking about performing as well. Julia? Do you mind if I just do a quick plug? So, um, you know, dialect right from the very beginning, it's been very much about building a network of people who are isolated and sort of bringing emerging writers, writers together and, and building a sense of community. So collaboration has very much been at the heart of um, what we do. And um, this was a project that myself and Alice Will Willits worked on called Dirt. And it, well, it, it continues to live, it, it's not in the past tense. Um, and we crowdfunded to experiment with a collaboration so we wrote this poem called chapel and to also experiment with um sustainable publishing essentially so the, the paper is brown because it's unbleached so it's produced on the, the poem has been produced on unbleached paper um which is compostable as well and printed with vegetable inks and it comes with a little packet of seeds um, which have been passed down through Alice's family. These are little poppies. And you, when you finish reading the poem, the idea is that you plant them and you put it back and you literally let it go back to the earth. Um, so that's an ongoing project. It's edited by Alice Willits. So if you'd like to know more about that, you can check out the website, which is dialect.org.uk and find out a bit more about this exciting project. Thank you, Julia. And I'm going to pass back to you again for just the closing remarks before we all head off onto the rest of our Thursday evening. Great. It, it just remains me to thank everybody just so much. And thank you, everybody, for turning up tonight and for showing up for our authors and supporting them and celebrating their work. It's just been absolutely brilliant. Um, so thank you to Rachel Goodman. Elvia Roberts, Emily Lucas, Nick Grelia, and to Emma for her great chairing. And thank you to the audience. Do support us. Join our membership. If any of there are any writers out there, we write regularly um, throughout the week together, which just seems to be magic. It works brilliantly. And do jump onto our membership. Buy our books. Follow us online. We're at we're called at dialect writers everywhere across all of the platforms. Um, and I just want to close by wishing everybody a very happy Imolk and a joyful return to the light. Thanks so much. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you both as well. That was Thank amazing. you. Oh, <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Oh, oh what a lovely Alice. crowd. Thank you. Bye. I don't know if you can hear me, but thank you. That was excellent. We can. Oh, thanks, thank you very much. Can. Oh, hello. Well, um, yeah, well done, uh, everyone. It was wonderful. I really enjoyed it all the way through. Thank you. Oh, brilliant. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, thank Rory. Thank you so much. Thank Take you care. So Bye. Much. It was fantastic. Thanks, Bye. Mary. Thank you. Thank you. From thank New York. Thank you so much.
Thank you, Terry. 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 I loved it. The words, I'm so inspired and so beautiful. And keep me on that mailing list. I want to join again and listen to all of you. Brilliant. Thank you. Thanks, Terry. Bye. -bye. Thank you, my sister. <laughs> Yay. Yes, my sister. Love you. Love you too. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know this. I can remove people from the room. You can go full Jackie Weaver. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just gonna one last person to go. Game sign off. <laughs> Get off. He's obviously gonna be a Then it asks me if I want to report him for bad behaviour. <laughs> the power. <laughs> the power. Oh, oh I can actually clap now. Well done. Oh, oh 